let's talk about failure and why maybe we should all get a little bit more okay with failing. Specifically, I'm going to talk to you today about my failed web development tech career. If you have been watching my channel for any amount of time, you already know I have been talking about getting a new job for two and a half, close to three years now. I was originally looking for a web development software, like a coding job, and at some point I switched gears and now I am looking for different kinds of jobs than that. But I've never really told the story about me and tech and the web development job and why I never really got one. And I think if you've been watching for a while, you might at this point be thinking, why is this lady talking about this job forever and never getting, like, why doesn't she just get a job? And if anybody wants to know, throughout the last two and a half years, I have been continuously employed. I do have a job. I have not been able to secure a better job than the one I have. I want to use this as a way to further explore the topic of, like, this kind of feel-good vibes toxic positivity, self-help culture that I was so immersed in for so many years. In April of 2021, if you go back three years, remember that time period, we were all living our best COVID life, felt like the apocalypse was upon us. Like a lot of people, my life totally fell apart during COVID. I had determined that I needed to leave my marriage leave the city I was living in, move clean across the country with my two kids. My dad is an incredibly helpful person. He's done a lot of things for me in life. He's helped me out with a lot of things, educational and otherwise. He was just like, you know what? You could maybe be an HVAC tech. Do you want to be a paralegal? Do you want to teach? What do you want to do? What do you want to do differently with your life? But he was really breathing down my neck to just get into some kind of training program. And he had suggested a bunch of things and none of it felt right and none of it really made any sense or felt practical. But one day I was sitting in my bed in Las Vegas and it felt like the world was kind of ending. But I had this moment of suddenly remembering that a couple people when I had lived in Seattle who were like software people, because it was Seattle and most people I knew were software people, who were like, you know, Catherine, they have these software boot camps now. And I did one, a software boot camp or my friend did this thing and you should go do this. The idea of a software boot camp is you go for a very intense training period for like, maybe five months or seven months, and you focus on just learning software development. And then when you're done with it, you get a certificate and they help you get a job. And you go out in the world and you be a software developer. One day I woke up in bed and I was like, I, I could do software. I'm like good at math and nerdy stuff. And I, I could learn how to code. I, I could do that. I called my dad and I was like, I think I wanna do an IT training program. And it doesn't really matter what it is, just like some IT thing, and then I could get an IT job. And he was like, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was just looking at some of these software boot camps, and I think you should look at this one and this one and this one. And we talked about it for a few days, and I looked at a few, and I made some phone calls, and my dad agreed to help me pay for things. And I, within a few days, I had signed up for a software boot camp. But the boot camp I went to, um, I talked to them. They were really positive. I don't know. They were rated well. Uh, they said their job placement rate was like 86% for graduates, which really sold me. In hindsight, I think they were probably fudging that statistic maybe a little. I'm not going to put down boot camps or say that they're bad or, you know, they're like a scam or a ripoff or they're not worth it. It wasn't like I joined a multi-level marketing company or I signed up for some like $5,000 like become a life coach training program. Like I think it was a legitimate training program. It just, the reality of it really didn't pan out for me. Some of that probably had to do with me and my circumstances and some of that had to do with just the world and life circumstances and things that weren't really in my control. 
while I am in the boot camp, I have like the biggest trauma and the biggest life crisis I have ever had in my entire life. But I was in an absolutely terrible living situation. My kids weren't there. They were away. They were staying with some family in Seattle for like the last two months I lived in Las Vegas. That was trauma in and of itself that my kids weren't living with me. I was basically on my own. I had to pack up my entire marital home by myself and move everything out of it. Still working full time until like the day before I left Las Vegas. I, I was doing this boot camp, going to school 20 hours a week at the same time. Like it was insane. I was like driving across the country with my kids and, and I would be like in the hotel room trying to get the Wi-Fi to work so I could go to class. Of course, we got to Delaware. I got a new job. I had to set up working from home here. I had to get my kids in school. We had to set up our whole life here. We had to get a whole house full of furniture. And when I look back on it now and how hard I was on myself for failing at this thing, I think about it now and it's like, oh my God, the amount of work I was doing was nuts. I was absolutely hyper-functioning for a long period of time. October of 2021, I graduate the boot camp with honors. I finish, I get all the certificates, all the accolades, everybody pats me on the head, I've done such a good job. And this boot camp, to be fair to it, they don't just like give you the certificate and send you out in the world. There is a career counseling component. I had access to a career counselor. You can go to your career counselor for as long as you want to. I think technically I could still hit this guy up right now and schedule a Zoom meeting with him and talk about my career if I wanted to. That would be embarrassing. I get my resume together. I meet with the career counselor. He tells me to edit the resume. I meet with him again. He gets helps me get a cover letter set up. I've written lots of, I've had lots of professional jobs in my life. I've written lots of cover letters. Like I know how to get a job. So he helps me write a better cover letter. We set up spreadsheets. We have meetings. I apply to jobs. He gives me specific ex assignments. He gives me worksheets to do. He tells me to start um, developing apps, small pieces of software that I can like deploy and show people, you know, to show people what my abilities are. I start making apps. I literally made an app a day. I learn how to deploy to AWS. I make a website. I, I got a GitHub profile. I update my LinkedIn every day. I'm not saying like the world was against me or the software bootcamp failed me in some way, but I will say with confidence, I did everything I was supposed to do. And you know, sometimes you do everything you're supposed to do in life and um, it still doesn't work out. And my career counselor pointed me in the direction of a nonprofit organization that does a lot of software coding stuff and said, you need to volunteer with these people uh, so you can gain some experience to put on your resume. I signed up, I volunteered. Within like a couple weeks, I become like the technical lead on the website development team. And I am now like the project manager and I have three to five hours a week worth of meetings in addition to everything else I'm already doing. I am grinding it and I am so convinced I am going to be able to get this job. Laser focused, positive attitude, gotta have the right attitude, gotta really believe you can do it, get out there and just, and just believe it's already yours, you know? And I did that thing for a year and a half. I did that. One day I just crashed. It was too much. I hit this extreme burnout. I suddenly like, I absolutely ghosted this organization I was working for, which I've never done anything like that before in my life. Like I kind of told them I didn't want to be the tech lead anymore and somebody else was going to have to do it because it was too much work for me. And eventually it all just became too much. And I, I just, I just stopped going. I just stopped talking to them. Just fell into a very sudden, serious depression that really lasted about a year. During that year, I would have fits and spurts of being like, no, Catherine, you 
how you're not you're being lazy and you're slacking off and you're just not working hard enough and you're not grinding and you're not trying and you didn't really try and you didn't really give it your all and you just have to practice a few more algorithms and you just have to apply to a few more jobs and you just have to like maybe work on one more project and I would go through these phases of sending out a million resumes and then I wouldn't hear back and I would get super depressed and stuff and it was a cyclic pattern and it went on for like months because for a long time it's embarrassing to say this now but I was very deeply entrenched in like new age self-help law of attraction culture and and this idea that you know we're creating all of our experiences all the time and we're attracting things to ourselves and I needed to like attract or just have the right positive attitude to get this new job. I was buying into like a really flawed set of beliefs and it was wrecking my self-esteem and my productivity. And part of that is the extreme toxic positivity. All you have to do is take a scroll, scroll through Instagram and you will just see meme after meme after meme of believe in yourself, achieve, never quit, never give up on your dreams. All you have to do is believe. You have to believe. You have to believe and you have to really want it. And it's like, and people talk about this as if wanting and believing something is all that's required for it to, to happen in the world. For a long time, I really bought into that. And the problem with the idea, again, this is super embarrassing to me now, but the problem with the idea of there being like a law of attraction and we're all just attracting these experiences is the logical other side of that coin has to be if I'm not getting the experiences that I want or if bad things are happening, it must ultimately be my fault because I'm not believing or thinking about it the right way. It took me a really long time probably close to a year to admit that I wasn't looking for a web development job anymore. I didn't really think I was going to get one. I had lost faith in it and I had really kind of moved on. It took me a super, super long time to admit that because it felt like such a failure. I felt like I had wasted my money. I felt like I had wasted my dad's money. I got like next level, like childhood triggered by the, just all these voices in my head from all these people saying, you know, you're being lazy, you're not working up to potential, you're not working hard enough. And because I grew up in a time where neurodivergence was not a conversation anybody had. And if you weren't able to focus and do well in school, but you seem to have an, a high IQ, people just assumed that you were choosing not to do well. I was so triggered by the idea of having to give this thing up. On the other side of the positive believe in yourself messages nonstop that never let you think critically about yourself and your abilities and your situation, the other side of that is what James Janney refers to as hustle culture. Work hard, work hard. You gotta be working all the time. You gotta be working harder than other people. Work hard. If you didn't achieve something, it's because you didn't really want it bad enough and you didn't work hard enough. Working hard matters. You do have to work hard to achieve things. At some point when you are throwing yourself into the same activity over and over and over and it's not working out, there is a point where you have to stop and understand <laughs> you are working hard at the wrong Thing. Toxic positivity prevents us from being able to look objectively at the reality of our circumstances and our actual abilities. So for a long time, I sincerely thought that like I just needed to have better self-esteem and more confidence. One of the things that happened to me, and it's been a pattern in my life, it's happened before, it was like I did really well in the educational environment. I did really well in the boot camp where I had structure and you know people just gave me assignments. I could do all the assignments. I was very successful at that. I was very successful at actually writing the code and completing all the tasks. But when I had to take those things out in the world and apply them 
and communicate my skills to people and actually apply them to somehow getting a real job. It was a canyon I could not cross. I was great at solving algorithms in Python and I was great at writing Python code in a Django framework and linking the back end to the front end. That's not anybody's actual job description. I'm not saying the boot camp necessarily did me wrong or didn't really teach me the right things. It's just that what they taught me was like so basic compared to what I needed to actually be employed. A lot of these things have to do with the economy and the job market at any given time. The original idea of these boot camps was that software companies needed developers. There was a big demand for developers. There was a lack of people out there who knew how to code. There was a time where you could get a short amount of training that would teach you how to code. And if you had a non-technical background, companies wanted devs bad enough that they were willing to take a chance on you. But what would happen during COVID was everybody's life fell apart. Everybody had a crisis. Everybody wanted a career change. Tons of people did software boot camps, And I think the job market is just absolutely flooded now with people who have these certifications. And the reality of entry-level software jobs and trying to get one is I can't really compete in that market. Even though I love myself so much and have such a good self-esteem and have so much faith in my ability, there are more than enough people out there competing for these jobs. Why would anybody call me when I have no practical technical experience and I don't have a degree in anything technical? I have this completely artsy generalized background. I'm not a great option for people. And I think a lot of self-help culture kind of taught us that we were special somehow. Maybe there was a time where you could just get a certificate from one of these boot camps, and if you were ambitious and you worked hard and you grinded hard enough, you could just run out and get yourself a job making seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year right away. I think there probably are still some people who are able to do that. I just couldn't. Some of it, it probably is just me and my brain. Like I am a ta very, very hands-on tactile learner. I need to learn through experience. I need to learn by doing things. I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do and what direction I could go in because it was all just too abstract to me. The idea of what do I need to learn and what kind of job am I going to get? It's like, well, I can't figure out what I want to do, what I'm good at, or what's going to work for me without doing it. But it seemed that I couldn't do it without making the decision first. Everybody told me to learn algorithms better so I'd be better at coding interviews. I never had a coding interview. Nobody called me for a coding interview. And I'm not here to make a bunch of excuses about why I did or didn't achieve a particular goal. Girl, sometimes we doubt our abilities because our abilities aren't good enough. I wasn't good enough. I don't mean I wasn't good enough in, in the sense of like having value as a human being. I don't mean good enough in a grand sense. I had to come to the conclusion that my abilities weren't good enough for what I was trying to do in that moment and that that was okay. And it really broke my heart because I really liked coding. I like problem solving. I think really I could be a really good engineer. It wasn't like it was this flaky dilettante thing where I tried it for a while and I just flaked out and was lazy and, and just didn't complete it. And it wasn't as if I tried it and figured out, oh, this really isn't for me. It wasn't like that at all. At a different time in my life, at a different time in the world, I could have done that and I could have been really successful as a software engineer. And I'm certain I could still become a developer. I could still get into engineering in some way. If I sat and I really focused and worked at this thing for a few years, I could probably do that. But that isn't reality. That isn't what I 
want to be doing with myself right now, and I don't think it's what I should be doing. When we've gone down a path for a long time and we've made a huge investment of our time, our money, our energy in something, and it's not working and it's not going to work, we will often stay with that thing for a ridiculously long time because the pain of continuously doing something that isn't working feels so much easier to deal with than the pain of admitting that we made a mistake. Or that sometimes things just don't work out and it's time to cut our losses and move on. Like part of me wants to go grind it out and like go get a degree and be that woman that started her software engineering career like at age 50 and you know everybody will ask me to come be like a keynote made a motivational speaker at their event to tell you about how you should never give up on your dreams but the smarter part of me wants to be happy and I'll be a lot happier letting it go. Love yourself, believe in yourself, work hard, and quit on your dreams if your dreams are f***ing stupid. Special shout out to you if you're actually watching this video all the way to the end.